Given, and you can easily come up with a target function and just solve the constraint and plug it in, and uh, afterwards you use calculus. This is slightly different. It, uh, for this one, you have to figure out what kind of parameter to use. Okay. How would you describe different triangles as inscribed? So, for example, I can have another triangle that's like this. But obviously, that would have smaller area than, than this one, right? So our, our goal is to figure out the triangle that maximizes the area. But even just by looking at it, we, we kind of expect this triangle to be at least coming down up to here. Now, if, if it crosses, if this angle, no, no, if, it, if this triangle crosses the, the center of the triangle, the center of the circle, what would this angle be? Does anyone know from geometry? Ninety degrees. Right? That's, that's from geometry. And then afterwards, you can come downwards, and then uh, in the extreme case, in the opposite extreme case, you'll be having a triangle that, like this. That's also, which also has a very small angle. Okay. So I think I can make the parameter to be. Let me erase this and then draw it. So that confusing. Okay. Right. Um, 
So let's try that. First, since this is A and that's also A, let's figure out the length of this side from angle theta. So let me draw it over here. This much is drawn over here. Here's A. Here's 90 degrees because we just cut it in half. And uh, because this portion is an isosceles triangle, if we cut it in half, this will be 90 degrees. Okay. Uh, and here's the angle theta. Now this side is adjacent to this angle theta. So how do you get this side from length A and, and with angle theta? What do you use? A is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. This side is adjacent to this angle theta. So what do you use? Cosine. Cosine. Sokatoa. Right? Uh, because of Sokatoa, and we know that cosine of theta is, if I call this as x, x over a, this unknown x is a times cosine theta after you multiply a both sides. You multiply a both sides and cancel, we get a cosine theta. Okay, so we know that this much is a cosine theta. Therefore, what's this much? Hmm? Yeah. This will be twice of this, right? Be 2a cosine theta. Okay, then we're pretty close to getting the answer. Now we have 2a cosine theta, and because we are trying to come up with an isosceles triangle, this side is also 2a cosine theta. And the angle in between is 2 theta. Uh, now, can anyone tell me, uh, you know, maybe I have to think about this. Um, one thing you can do is you can use the formula that a triangle's area is a times b times sine of the angle theta. The area is one half a b sine theta. Uh, but I, I just realized that uh, most of you wouldn't uh, know this formula at all. So uh, if you don't, let's then we'll have to do more geometry. Let's let's just do this. Uh, since this side is angle theta, and we have a right triangle here, let's try to find the, the height and the base of this triangle. So if I know the height and the base of this triangle, then we can find out the uh, entire area just by doing base times height, right? So first of all, uh, I have this angle theta because I just cut it. So this side is theta. And I want to know the height. What should I use? Sine or cosine? Cosine, because this side is adjacent to this angle, right? So the height h is 2a cosine theta, which is the hypotenuse, multiplied by, again, by the cosine theta. If you multiply cosine theta, then you get the height. Okay. And what about the base? <coughs> Multiply the hypotenuse by what? Sine. Sine theta. And, uh, well, actually, this sine theta times this will be just, just this much. To get the entire base, we have to multiply by 2, because I have to double it. And then we are almost done. Now the area is 1 half bh, which is uh, 2a cosine theta. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared, right? Times 2a cosine theta sine theta times 2, but because of this 1 half, let's divide it. And if we simplify, 2a times 2a is 4a squared. 
and then you have cosine squared. No, cosine times cosine squared times cosine is cosine cubed, theta, and sine theta. That's what we have as the area function. And the angle theta should be bigger than zero, because of course it's this angle. And uh, I think it has to be less than 45, but uh, let's just say theta is between zero to 90 degrees. If it's more than 90 degrees, you don't get a triangle at all, so it doesn't make sense. So, uh, but, but this is what we're trying to use. Now, this time, once you represented your function, we, see, we can see that it's a function of theta, right? We have two letters here, a and theta, that they're two, but, but a is a fixed number. A is given uh, radius of the circle that doesn't change. So a is fixed, and we're just trying to see what happens if we, if we change the angle of this isosceles triangle, right? So this is really a function of theta. So that means uh, to find the maximum value of this, you just have to figure out when the derivative is equal to zero. So let's find the derivative a prime using the, the product rule because it's, uh, it's a product of two things. So first, if I differentiate cosine cubed of theta, that we have to use a chain rule, 3 times 4 times a squared cosine squared of theta. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine theta. And then there's the sine theta afterwards. And then uh, plus 4a squared. Then when you differentiate sine, you get cosine. So it's cosine to the fourth of theta. Oh, uh, it still has 3 times 4. Okay. Oh, no, it doesn't have 3. Okay, now if we look at these two terms, they both have cosine squared as a common factor. This is cosine squared times cosine squared. And 4a squared also has a common factor. Did I miss something? Where's the 3 come? Oh, 3 comes, okay. when, you want, uh, when you differentiate cosine cubed, 3 comes down and cosine squared theta, but then cosine is, is, is an inside function, so you have to pull it outside and differentiate. Remember, Cosine cubed of theta means what? It's cosine theta of cubed. That's what this means. So when you differentiate this, cosine theta is the inside function. So 3 comes down, and uh, this becomes 2, but then cosine has to be pulled out and differentiated. So that's, that's why I get this. But what about the 4a squared? 4a squared is just from before. So you don't differentiate Oh, 4a squared is a... Is a, a constant multiple, so it just stays there. We don't do anything to constant multiples. If it's a constant number by itself, then when you differentiate, it becomes zero. But constant multiples, you don't, you don't do anything to it. It just stays there. OK, 4a squared is a common factor. Cosine squared is also a common factor. Now what we have is 3 times sine squared theta with a minus. It's minus 3 sine squared theta. And then over here, it's plus cosine squared of theta. OK, any, any questions so far? All right. Um, so in order for a prime to be 0, um, since angle theta is an angle between 0 to 90 degrees, so this is never 0. 4a squared is never 0. So we really need to figure out when this part is equal to 0. Okay. So negative 3 sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta. When is this equal to 0? That's, that's our plan. And uh, there, there are two ways to do this. Uh, one is to use tangent. Another way to, is to use uh, sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. Do, do, you, do you know that formula? Yeah. Sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared? Okay. Yeah, let's use that. that. That's probably easier. But you can also divide everything by cosine squared to turn this side into tangent. That's another method. Uh, you can try that out. Okay. So if I replace sine squared by 1 minus cosine squared of theta, then we get negative 3 
plus cosine, 3 cosine squared theta plus cosine squared of theta equal to 0. And this is 4 cosine squared of theta equal to, if I move the 3 to the other side, that becomes 3, right? So I can, these two are like terms, right? 3 cosine squared and 1 cosine squared. If I combine them, they become 4 cosine squared. And negative 3, if you move to the other side, you get 3. Alright, uh, can I erase this? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess I can erase this one. Okay. Alright, so you divide by 4, and you get cosine of theta equals to plus or minus square root of 3 over 4. Whenever you take the square away, you need the plus minus, right? And uh, because square root of a division is a square root of the top and also the square root of the bottom, we have plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. Now again, our angle of theta is an angle between 0 to 90 degrees. So this can, uh, cosine doesn't take any, give you any negative values when, when angle theta is between 0 to 90 degrees. So the negative cannot, cannot be true. So we will just think about when this is true. For what value of theta is this true? Theta equal to? Huh? 30, de 30 degrees. Cosine 30 is radical 3 over 2. Cosine 60 is 1 half. So you should know those values. So we know that theta should be 30 degrees. OK. Uh, whenever you get the, the question like, like this, you have to go back to check whether you, are, whether you want the, the area or the angle that makes the dimension that makes the largest area. But here, uh, it, it, it's asking for, you, for the area. So uh, you can't stop here. You have to go further and figure out the area. Oh, uh, by the way, um, when you try to find the maximum value of a function, you have to evaluate the function at the boundaries and also at the critical numbers. And whatever gives you the maximum gives you the maximum, right? Uh, but if you think about the boundaries, when theta is equal to zero, you, you just get a straight line. What's the area of a straight line? <coughs> If theta is zero, if, if, if theta becomes zero, if these two lines are close together to give you, to give you a straight line, right? In that case, what's the area that, of that triangle? It's not a triangle, but if you say it's, a, it's zero, right? And the same thing happens if you make the angle theta go to like, like 90 degrees. In that case, you just the, the entire thing gets closed down to a point. So in both extreme cases, you get zero. And because this is the only critical number that's inside the domain between 0 to 90 degrees, uh, and if this gives you a non-zero number, this better be the, the maximum value. That's how you argue for it, okay? Now, if you don't want to use that kind of argument, another way to do this will be to use test points and use the first derivative, to te derivative test to show that the area function is increasing before 30 degrees, and it's decreasing after 30 degrees. That, that will be another way to argue for that, but uh, that's just too much work. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. We will just use this angle theta degrees to figure out the area. Okay. Um, all right, so I, I erased the area function, but if I recall it correctly, it was 4a squared cosine cubed of theta times sine of theta. Am I right? I think it's right. Yeah. So it's 4a squared times uh, cosine is radical 3 over 2 cubed. And sine of 30 degrees is what? Sine of 30 is? 1 half. So this is 8, 2, 16, 4 over 16 is 1 fourth. And then Square root of 3 to the cubed is 3 radical 3. So it's 3 over 4 a squared times radical 3. That's the answer. Okay. 